Hello and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. Um, once again, thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Um, today's video um, comes from a request from Catherine Bonner. She wanted to know how I created the three panel artwork that sits in my front living room. Um, and although I hadn't done a video for that one, I decided to create a new one. Um, and while it's not the same as the previous one, I very rarely do the same design twice. Um, I'll use the same colours and things like that, but I very rarely will do the same design. I try to keep it fresh all the time. So this is the piece that I uh, created this week. So it's quite a simple design and it just goes and shows you how I um, create the layers, how I move the resin round to create the effect, what I do to have the um, resin run down the sides, add in the stones, you know how I like to have stones in my pieces, so this is uh, one where we've got the stones, how I clean up the back, and then, yeah, so then it's just hung on the wall, ready to go. And this one's going to be um, not for sale. This one is a personal one because I used really inexpensive board for the tutorial. And, yeah, I feel, although, you know, it looks all right on the wall, it's, I wouldn't be happy to sell it. So, um, so that's going to stay in my home. Uh, maybe not here, but I'll probably put it in a different location. But... Um, so anyway, without further ado, let's get on with the video. Thank you. Okay, so these are boards that I've already primed and they've been left to dry for quite some time. Um, as you can see, I've taped up round the sides to create a dam. And what I'm doing now is I've pushed the boards together and I'm taping the sides together so that when we pour the resin, it doesn't flow in between the panels and then cause them to stick together because that can cause all kinds of problems down the line so by just taping these together it means that when if any resin was to flow across it's not going to flow down the side it's just going to pour into the um, panels So I had a very simple design in mind, so I'm just sketching out the area that I'm going to um, use for the design. So it's going to be almost like a two-tone, it's going to be blue and black with some white. Now the blue that I'm using is a metallic blue um, and just regular uh, black acrylic paint. So what I'm doing now is I'm just doing a very thin layer to just mark out the areas of where the colours are going to go. So at this stage I'm not worried about you know, the look of it or anything like that. This is just a thin layer to start off with. I use my fingers to have it moving in the same in the direction of the flow because this is metallic you get quite a bit of depth so um, by having it moving in the same in the direction of the flow it, it gives a really nice effect same with the next color what i've got here is i've got black acrylic paint but i've actually added some of the metallic blue to that which made it a little bit too light for my liking but it does give it a nice shimmer you can't really see that in the video just there but what I'm going to do in a minute is pour some um, more layers on top and the colours will get a lot denser and but the, the really good thing with this is the metallic will shine through the black once I start moving things around so you'll get like a nice shimmer in the black as well as the uh, metallic I was going to say turquoise, but it's not turquoise, it's actually teal. So here I've just done gone for plain black. There's no additional pigments added in here because when you move it around, like I say, I want the colour to shine through the bottom. So I'm just moving that around once again, I'm just filling the space and just getting a general idea of the shape. And same with the 
the teal I'm adding an extra layer there just to thicken it up a bit and then moving it around but you can see what I'm doing here as well as I'm also blending the two colors slightly so I don't have a hard line once we have the basic shape it's now um, adding definition and some interest to it so I'm just layering colors um, at the side of the edge really because I, I still want that line there that you can see the, the difference between the two and I'm just going to add lines and lines of resin but I mean this is not going to stay like that it's going to get manipulated but it just gives the shape on how I want it to look Now initially I thought about using my hairdryer to move the resin around but it wasn't achieving the result I wanted. Um, I have used this before and it's looked well on another project but that's not what I wanted to um, happen in this one. So I tried the stick and um, the bottle brush again that wasn't really working the way I wanted so I went back to the old trusty fingers and using my fingers I manipulated it. Now I'm not actually pulling the resin here, I'm actually just dabbling it with my fingers. It's a little bit difficult to see here because I don't want it to pull um, and become muddy. I'm just using my fingers to just move it slightly to get that sort of feathered effect. And then using the heat gun here to just zap any bubbles um, as we go along. So using my trusty decoration fillers that I get really ex inexpensively from a local craft store. Um, some of the discount stores sell them as well. But these are fabulous. These are actually in the shape of diamonds. And as you can see, the light bounces off these, um, creating a marvellous effect. Now they do sink into the resin and so some will disappear into the resin. So I'll pour um, a couple of layers on top. So I'm actually using two bags of stones for this piece. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just go around just make sure see it I'll see some loose stones and I'll just give them a little push into the resin to just make sure that they catch in the resin and are not loose and again we just zap this with the heat gun to one to move any pieces out the way and two to make sure that they're set in the resin and there's no bubbles so this is a close-up of how it's looking so far it's still very wet and I'm hoping it doesn't move, well it shouldn't move too much because of the dam, um, but I'm hoping that we don't lose any of the definition with some colours maybe sinking below others and what have you, but you can see the the the, the bling, the sparkle from the stones um, and see why I like them so much. The resin has been curing now for about an hour, a, a couple of hours, so now I want to separate the pieces and because I taped across the top just using the scissors there, just separate the, the tape so I can just pull them apart so that I can now take the tape off. Um, as you can see there's no resins run between the centre, although I, I didn't stick the tape very well to the bottom on that. Um, right hand panel and I did get a little bit of runoff but that's fine it wasn't too bad so yes yeah, so just being careful now just to remove the tape and I'll do that with all all of the sides now the reason why I leave the tape on for a couple of hours is to thicken the resin up on the top so that we get a slow flow of resin down the sides. Now unfortunately um, sometimes it like in this case this middle board was slightly warped so the resin was a little bit thicker on one side than the other. Uh, it was actually warped across the diagonal so it was um, it was not perfect so what I'm doing here is I'm just tilting it slightly and using the heat gun I'm using that to manipulate the resin so that it starts flowing down which in an ideal world I wouldn't have liked to have done that because obviously I don't want to have the resin on the face moving too much but just for the purposes of um, putting it on the sides I did need to tilt it slightly so what I'm doing now is I'm just um, dragging resin that has run down the sides and using it to place it in places that doesn't have any so I'll also grab um, resin from 
any little puddles that are on the table and things and help to do that now as you can see here I'm just tilting the canvas at uh, the board slightly just to let it move um, and so that I've got enough for the side to run down so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go around the whole uh, panel just tidying up edges and like I said just dragging resin off the table and placing it on there now don't worry too much about um, it not being super smooth or anything at the moment see how I'm, I'm manipulating the resin to get it to flow and dragging um, colour from the runoffs because I'm going to use the heat gun slightly to warm the resin and then it will start moving a bit quicker and it will start to flow down the sides so and it will uh, level itself out and will still end up with a nice smooth finish so you know as much as resin can be a bit of a pain to work with at times it can also be quite forgiving because it is self leveling so I'll just do continue that all the way around and do that with all um, all three panels So once all the sides are done, um, we're then going to leave this to cure overnight and we'll come back tomorrow to see what else needs to be done. So it's the next morning. Um, it's all cured as you can see the resin has um, dribbled down the sides and we're now going to tidy this area up and as you can see the resin is quite smooth um, as I mentioned earlier once once it starts leveling and things like that you get a nice smooth finish so all I'm doing here now is I'm just heating up the edges with my heat gun just so that it's nice and supple now if I'd left it longer I would use the chisel um, when the resin is a bit hard but because it's only been overnight the resin is still quite soft so it's quite easy to trim with a knife but like I say if it's left longer I will heat it and then uh, chisel away at it with a wood chisel but in this case I don't need to do that because the resin's cutting off quite easily as you can see so I'll go around and trim all of those edges up and um, we're almost done then So here you can see the back, um, all the little hanging down bits of resin have now been cut off. We do have still remnants of resin there but I'm not too worried about that because it's going to be up against my wall and you're not going to see it. But so, I mean if the blobs were hanging there, that it would mean that they wouldn't hang flat against the wall but as you can see uh, the finished piece has turned out quite well. Um, all the stones in there add, add a little bit of interest and texture. Um, next to the nice smooth finish as always I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any requests like Catherine please don't hesitate to contact me um, in the description uh, below you'll see some handy links to the Facebook page and Instagram and things like that so um, you can contact me that way um, and once again thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon thank you goodbye